Okay, Coach, uh, thanks for taking the time. We'll uh, let you start with uh, some opening comments, then we'll go right into questions. Well, one, I appreciate you guys having me here. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you guys have. Uh, and try to be as candid as possible. With that being said, I'll turn it over to you guys. Sounds good. If you have a question for Coach, raise your hand in the participant window. First question comes from Scott Docterman from The Athletic. Hi, Liddell. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. I wanted to ask just kind of about the running game right now. I mean, it's there's a lack of consistency, I guess we could probably say. And it seems like it's just one small detail almost on every single run that hasn't really worked. Uh, am I way off on that? And if, if I'm not, what can be corrected to enable you guys to get more out of the, the running game at this point? Well, I think the running game is something that can be tricky from week to week. And um, the truth is we'd love to get more out of it you know, on, a, on a more consistent basis. But games shape out to be different every week. And sometimes, it, um, you know, we may rely on the running game more. Some games we might rely on the passing game more. But at the, in the end, uh, as the running backs coach, we definitely want to be more productive in the running game um, uh, on a consistent basis. And we're continuously striving to do that, you know, whether it's uh, trying to maximize our runs from our, from our position, whether it's, uh, you know, everyone trying to finish their blocks as best as possible, however that needs to come about. Everyone um, shares responsibility in that, and we're all trying to do, get better. That's what we're trying to do. Along those lines, What's the fine line for, for a running back who may want to wait a half second later to maybe let things break up to, to try to hit a big run versus I just want to get up in there and get three or four yards and, and keep the ball and keep the chains going? Well, there is a little bit of an art to running the football. One is understanding the blocking schemes and understanding where the ball is supposed to fit. But uh, to your point, there is a, a, a tempo and a pace to it, too. You want to be... One of the things I preach to the guys is patience to the hole and speed through the hole. So it, it, everything has to work together, uh, wh wh how the linemen approach their blocks and how the running back goes through his footwork and his aiming points. All of it has to be on uh, on par with each other. So that's something we're, we're consistently trying to work on, and we consistently try to do that day in and day out so that um, when we get out there on – this week will be Friday night, but when we get out there on Saturdays as well, it, it, you know, it all comes to fruition for us. Thank you. Sorry, I was muted. Uh, John from the Cedar Rapids Gazette. Hey, Liddell, what have you seen from Arlington so far this year? From who? Arlen. Oh, sorry. Arlen, uh, what have I seen? Arlen's a hard worker. Uh, a guy that's been out there, he, he, I don't know if he's even missed a practice. So he definitely comes out ready to work. There's a lot of maturity to him in that, uh, along with a lot of the other freshmen out there. But all his, he's an explosive player. He's had a chance to make a couple plays. and. Hopefully that continues as we go on week in, week out. David, 24-7 sports. Hey, Liddell, appreciate you doing this. Um, you know, you and, you and Ivory Kelly Martin have spoken highly of each other. I know you, you, you know you talked about him always keeping his head up through spring ball and when he was trying to rehab his knee. Uh, how have those conversations been with him over the past, you know, two weeks or so? He's struggling to hang on to the ball. And, you know, what, what were those conversations like and how have you seen him kind of respond in practice and, and on the sidelines? Well, from Ivo's perspective, nothing has changed for him. He he continues to be a consummate professional, in my opinion. He's always ready, always willing to do whatever I ask him to do. Never, never pouts. Never, no matter what the amount of carries, no matter what the situation is. I think he's been the ultimate professional. So over the last couple of weeks, you know, I think everybody understands he had um, a couple fumbles in what was that two weeks ago. But uh, me as a coach, when you go back and watch the film, it wasn't something where he was careless with the football. He wasn't waving the football out here. He didn't have it, uh, you know, away from his body. It was just great plays by the defense. And that kind of stuff happens, especially somebody like me that's played the position and I fumbled myself. I understand those type of things happen and uh, sometimes they're uncontrollable. And so you just have to bounce back and, and be ready for the next opportunity. And I think he's done that. We haven't lost confidence in him and I don't think he's lost confidence in himself. Um, Hawkeye Report. Hey, Liddell. Um can you um, tell me about Gavin Williams? He's gotten a little bit more of an opportunity here. What have you seen uh, growth-wise from him this season? 
From the day I got the job um, and I had an opportunity to coach Gavin, I've always been impressed with how he how he approaches practice, how he approaches things. He's he's always trying to pay attention, always trying to be uh, very detailed. In my opinion, he takes his, his I hate to say job, but he takes his, his, his craft seriously, which is something you respect out of a player. And with him getting an opportunity to get in the game, um, was it two weeks ago when uh, when Ivory was struggling a little bit with, with the football? I mean, I think he showed us, me and the coaching staff, that you know he can be counted on in, in tough situations. That was a tight ball game when he had to step up in there and even got a fourth and two for us. So I think his confidence is growing, and I think the coaching staff's confidence in him is growing as well. Chad, Des Moines Register. Hi, Liddell. Kind of cool that uh, your second Big Ten game as a coach goes back to where you played in the NFL most of your career. It's kind of neat. Um, question about Tyler Goodson. Do you, you know, having your, your, you know what it takes to be in the NFL. Does he have what it takes to be in the NFL? I believe so. I, I don't think there's really um, many limitations to his game. I think he's, he's an every down back. He's a guy that can run the ball. He can catch the ball. He's shown himself to be a capable blocker. So for him, it's just going to be about staying healthy, being a, being a great teammate, and um, continuing to work. And I think as long as we continue to progress as an offense and as a team, you know, that only helps him. So I, I don't see any reason why he wouldn't be in the NFL. Pennington, good morning, Register. Hey, Coach, appreciate you taking the time to, to speak with us. And I know that within the, the facility, practice culture is, is huge. What are you looking for day in and day out out of your running backs to where they can gain your trust to ultimately gain more carries on the field? Just ability to work and um, really be coachable. You know, no one, no one plays a perfect game. I know I never uh, I played football for 20 years and never once did I have a perfect game. So there's always room for growth. And when you're dealing with a group, especially um, two guys that have played a lot in Tyler and, and Ivo, you know, when those two guys are willing to be coached and willing to accept responsibility when there's room for improvement, that's all you can ask for. And that's, and that's what they do. They come out, they're ready to work. You're just trying to make sure they're detailed in their alignments, their assignments. And then the, the last part is on them, which is their effort. Scott? What do you, how do you uh, teach your running backs when, uh, for the outside slant? What are they looking for? What kind of aiming point are they trying to hit? And, uh, how, and how do you get to that feel of, I need to cut it up versus I want to just run around and, and try to find the perfect hole? All right. I mean, slant tracks are different for different teams. Uh, some people aim two yards outside of the tight end. Some people, I've heard aiming points out at the numbers. Uh, we tend to aim more at the, at the tight end, butter the tight end, and we try to read the blocks from there. It's really more of a feel. You put your eyes on your on your aiming point, and then you you feel what's happening. You feel the flow of the defense. The flow will tell you what to do with the football, whether you need to go outside, whether you need to cut it back. And also, we watch tape. We know a team's tendencies. We try to pay attention to that, so we try to run with some um, uh, expectancy, if you will, of what could potentially happen. A lot of, could that be, say, the, the front side defensive tackle goes hard towards the uh, towards the aiming point, and therefore the cutback lane is there. Or versus the defensive end crashing down, and maybe it's on the outside. That type of thing. Correct. Correct. You know, sometimes you, based on the structure of a team's defense, some defenses try to take away the outside more than others. Uh, so if you know if a team is tries to really set a hard edge, you know, mostly a lot of run plays may be more cutbacks that week. But you still have to read it out. You don't predetermine anything. You have to read it out, feel it, and, and let the game dictate what happens. Thank you. Chad? Specifically on the Maryland matchup, what, what challenges do you see uh, Friday night, and what opportunities do you see uh, for your offense? Challenges, uh, this is a good team. They're 4-0 they're oh for a reason, just like we're undefeated. Um, so. At some point, we get to find out who, who, who's going to win that game. We get to find out Friday night. But they present a challenge. They're, they're a three, four defense. Um, they, get, they have some big bodies down in the trenches. So their front seven is definitely very formidable. Uh, so we're going to have to be detailed in our work in terms of the running game. But we're also going to have to run through some arm tackles. And in my opinion, that's the job of running back anyway, is to try to get some yards on our own, yards after contact. And that, I think it's going to be that kind of a game. It's going to be some traffic in there. but. Um, I think we're up to the challenge.
Scott? Yeah. Um, in regard to, uh, to Tyler in the past game, he's been able to, to go out wide when you go empty. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. What's kind of the next step for him to just continue on this path of being one of the better running backs in the country in the past game? Yeah. I hate to simplify the answer, but it's really just continuing to work. Um, and he does that already. But it, as you continue to work and continue to get a better feel for the game, and I mean football as a whole, which he has a pretty good feel already, but the more game experience, the more practice, the more he sees and develops, he'll, he'll continue to get better because he has the, the mindset to want to be better and he has a work ethic. So it's really just about reps and continuing to work what he's already doing. Thank you. Tom? Um, well, I'm wondering, uh, you know, this is your first year, but what is this all? Um, <laughs> has this been what you thought it was going to be? What are your kind of uh, early impressions of being a college coach at, uh, at your alma mater? It's been fun so far. You know, um, it's a unique experience for me because I get a chance to come back to my alma mater. So there's some familiarity there. A lot of the coaching staff, uh, some of the coaches, some of the people I, I coach with now are guys I play with. So some of them are my teammates. So it's it's a good feeling there. It wasn't, it wasn't like I stepped into a completely foreign scenario. So it's been fun. Um, and, you know, what better way to, to, to enter a coaching experience than to have wins on top of that. So. Right now, it, it's, it's been great. We'll, we'll see how it goes as we continue, though. Scott? I wanted to ask about true freshman uh, Devin Hilson, uh, mm -hmm. because last year he had only two games. He's got, it seems, some positional flexibility. Mm -hmm. how, uh, how has he come along, and, and maybe what's his upside? Uh, Devin's coming along just fine. He's, he's doing a lot of scout work for us. Um, he. Obviously, when you come in, I think one of the big things that a lot of freshmen have to realize when they first get here is, you know, the 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 work ethic and the effort with which we practice. And once he caught a hold of that and, and how we work and how we do things in our room, he's taken off. Matter of fact, I think the first week or first, second week, he might have been scout team player of the week. So that means he's given maximum effort uh, for our defense down there. And I think everybody can see that our defense has been performing pretty well. So he, he's he's a part of that. He's he helps them get ready for it. For the games. Kennington. My question is kind of along the lines of, of what Scott was asking. You have this interesting dynamic where you have two running backs with a lot of experience and the rest of the room is freshmen who are just now beginning their, their journey. How do you feel about the trajectory of the young running backs in the room and how fortunate are they or how much can they can they learn from two veterans like Tyler and Ivo? Well, the two, the two young guys in the room uh, are very talented. Um, unfortunately for them, not everybody, can, there's only so many carries to go around. So they're, they're kind of behind the, the older guys that have a lot of experience and have a lot of talent themselves. So I think people will be pleasantly surprised when they get an opportunity to watch both of them play because uh, they're very talented. But I'm sure it's tough for them not being able to get reps as a competitor. I know, I know that feeling. I've been in that position before. But yet they still come out and work. And I think they have a lot of opportunity to learn from those guys, to your point, uh, that, are, that are ahead of them. And, and to Tyler and Ivo's credit, especially Ivo being the oldest in the room, they, they definitely try to impart wisdom and knowledge and, and make sure those guys are on their P's and Q's as well. Because at some point, we're going to need them. You know, we're going to need everybody in that room at some point. So they'll be ready. Pennington, do you have a follow-up question? I do. Uh, going along with what you said about, you know, there may be frustrations about not getting carries or not getting opportunities. How much of a challenge is that as a coach to keep those young players engaged, oftentimes coming from high school where they're, you know, quote unquote, the, the guy? And how have you adjusted to that, you know, since you've been here at, at Iowa? It, it's tough. You know, as a human being and as a former player myself, I can relate to it. And I, and I actually um, share those stories with them. You know, I've been in positions where I've had to wait my turn, so to speak, or, you know, I red shirted my first year here. I played in the NFL and I wasn't the starting running back. So I know that feeling of getting reps in practice, but not maybe necessarily getting reps in the games. And I'm very open and honest and I share that with them. And I, and I do that to, to show that the human side of like, I get it as a competitor, I understand. But I also tell them, understand that you continue to work. There will come a day when, when your number is going to be called and as, you, as long as you continue to work and not pout and not worry about that kind of stuff, you'll be ready when your number's called. And they get that. And those guys, to their credit, they haven't pouted. They haven't complained or anything. They just continue to work. But I'm not crazy. I know they want to play. 
And when their time comes, they'll be ready. Done. With, it seems like a lot of teams have been kind of stacking the box. Um, are you hoping that maybe you're expecting that maybe a more kind of more of these deep passes maybe creates a little more space for good center Ivo? We have to be a well-balanced uh, offense no matter what the scenario is. And obviously, if teams are stacking the box, uh, we want to be able to go over the top of their heads. I think any offense uh, uh, player or, or personnel would say that. So, you know, we just have to play with what the, de what the defense is uh, trying to give us. Whatever they're trying to take away, we need to uh, have a counter move for that. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to maximize all of our opportunities, whether it be in the passing game or the running game. Coach, we'll finish up uh, today's session with uh, one last question from Scott. I wanted to ask about Lee Sean. Um, he seemed to show a lot in the, just the few viewings that we've had. Um, what's his development like? And is he the type of, I mean, what do you expect for him in, say, 2022 and beyond? I think he's going to be a major contributor to this football team uh, as long as he continues to keep his head, uh, you know, focused in the weight room. Obviously, in the off season when, when we're not in season, but more importantly, we got to deal with this season right now, and he's already doing those things. He's he's ready to contribute right now. He's just uh, unfortunately in a room that's pretty crowded. It's not anything that he's not doing, uh, so he'll be ready. He is ready, and he will be ready when his numbers call. What's his uh, main attribute? Would you say? I think Lashawn is uh, a lot quicker than people realize. He's got quick feet, uh, and he has the ability to make people miss. And I think that's what. Um, People will be surprised to see when they get a chance to see him. Thank you. Hey, Coach, good luck this weekend. Thank we'll you. See you on the road. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you.